Hi, folks. So we are here again with another synchronous lesson. And today we're going to talk about the element of art space. Now, as I have said before, um, we are studying the elements of art and the principles of design. The way I like to break those down are the elements of art are the things that we use to create art. And the principles of design are pretty much the way that we use the elements. So if you were to think of it in terms of, say, um, a basketball game, um, if you were to play basketball, the elements in that sense would be the basketball, your sneakers, um, a hoop, um, a court, the basketball net itself. Um, those, those would be the elements, right? Um, and the principles would be, you know, ball handling skills, dribbling, um, offensive plays, defensive plays, um, the, um, the things that you do in order to play the actual game, right? Um, so that's kind of how the elements of art and the principles of design work. Um, as I said before, we're going to talk about the, the element space. Um, and for the most part, we're going to talk about positive and negative space. Now, I have pulled up on my computer here um, our week six um, art page. And um, I have this old Batman symbol. And the reason why I have it up is because it is a really good example of positive and negative space. Um, when I first saw this movie, um, I remember having a conversation with my mom and she was telling me that initially she didn't see the bat in the Batman symbol. She thought it was T because she was looking at the yellow part of this, of this image rather than the black part. And that is a perfect example. The yellow part is the negative space. It is the space around the object um, versus the positive space, which is the actual object itself, the Batman symbol. Um, and what I have here um, as part of your resources are um, another grouping of positive and negative space images. So on this image right here, if you are looking at the white spaces in this, you are going to see um, a sideways facing, uh, a sideways face, right? Um, but if you focus on the black part, that is the negative space um, between these two faces, you'll see a vase. If you are looking at the black space here, this positive space, um, it looks like a monkey hanging from a branch, right? So here are his arms, this curled S part looks like his tail, he's got his foot out. But if you look at the negative space around the monkey and through the tree limbs, you can actually see some kind of a big cat, almost like a tiger or a lion. On this image, um, if you focus only on the black part, um, you'll see a man playing a saxophone, right? So like this right here is the sax and then he's got this big nose. But if you take them together, like as we should with art, right? We focus on our positive and our negative space. If you take them together, you can actually see a woman's face, right? So like this black spot right over here is her eye. The area um, by the sax and the horn is her nose and mouth. On this one, if you take a look at the white spaces here, you will see a woman's leg, right? You'll see women's leg in like heels. But if you take a look at the black space, you will see that it's a men's leg in like trousers and dress shoes. Um, if you look at the positive space here of the, um, of the columns, we see these white columns here. But if you look at the negative space in between them, it actually looks like a group of men kind of with their heads together. With this one, if you're taking a look at um, in one perspective, you can see a face. I see an eye here. I see a nose. I see lips. I see an ear. And this would be hair back here. But we can kind of change our perspective and we can see a person with like maybe a big poofy jacket on with a furry um with like a furry hood um with their back to us right so this area here where i initially saw an eye if i take this together that looks like the back of somebody's head he's got the hood on and this is the fur um lining um this would be the person's hand maybe they're carrying a bag of some sort and this down here is their um, their feet, maybe they're looking, they're going, they're entering a doorway of some sort where it's really, really dark. We have a whole lot of positive and negative space, uh, space play here. Um, if you look at the larger image, this black elephant, um, we see that. But if we look at the space in between the trunk and the foot over here, we see a gorilla. 
Um, if you look at the space between the elephant's legs, I can see this white horse. And if I look at the space between the horse's legs, I see a dog. And in between the dog's legs, I see a cat. And in between the cat's legs, I see a mouse. Um, we have a, a little bit of wordplay too. We can, uh, we can do this in an abstract way. If you're looking at the black here, you're gonna see the word good. And if you look at the white, the negative space um, in between, you will see the word evil. And then this last one over here is um, uh, you have the words either me or you, depending on what caught your attention first. Those are all really good examples of how positive and negative space can be used in artwork. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about, I have this short video here that's really, really helpful um, that talks about um, space in art as well. The element of space is a bit tricky. When artists and designers talk about space, they might actually be talking about three distinctly different things. There's 3D space, positive and negative space, and white space. 3D space refers to the spatial reality of width, height, and depth, or XYZ. To render a sense of 3D space on a flat 2D plane, artists make use of one or two point perspectives, where vanishing points create the illusion of Z depth. But even without vanishing points, whenever objects are layered in front or behind each other, some sense of 3D depth in space is implied. Okay, deep thought. It's not possible to draw one thing on a page. You see, anything you draw is both adding a new shape onto the page and subtracting from the original white shape of the page itself. So you're really creating two shapes, one that's added and one that's being subtracted. Artists and designers have long made use of positive and negative space to provide a sense of cleverness. Next, there is white space, or the spacing between objects. Such spacing of objects is a huge part of what we call composition. A lot of space can add to the visual weight of an object. A little space can make objects feel crowded. Consistent spacing feels orderly, logical, and can provide a sense of calm. Random spacing can feel chaotic or playful. And so it is that space, the stuff you don't actually draw at all, can be a key element of art. So those are a couple of examples on how um on how space is used in art. And I'm gonna show you a couple of, um, a couple of places um, and a couple of pieces that show us um, how artists have used space throughout their art. Um, I am referring back to the artclasscurator.com. Um, and this is a great grouping of artwork that specifically on this page shows space, but you can go through and you can see that they also show um, where artists have used line, color, shape, balance, and emphasis. I just pulled out a few and I'm gonna talk about them um, <clears throat> in general. Um, so one of the first things that that video talked about was three-dimensional space and using perspective. Um, you can see in this School of Athens uh, Renaissance painting by Raphael, um, how I'm tracing the, they're called orthogonals, um, but how the perspective works and how this vanishing point draws your attention to the two main people in this, um, in this painting. Um, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about the space and the grouping. So you have grouping, uh, groupings of, of people here and it does feel a little bit crowded, but it also shows you all of this empty space around um, that makes it feel very orderly. Um, the, the vanishing points, all of these lines that lead us to um, our main people, to that vanishing point, um, help us to, to feel more ordered. It directs our eye around the canvas. Um, and he uses perspective too in this to, um, to show that things are receding into the background, right? So like we know that these arches are probably all about the same um, shape, uh, the same size rather. So we have one big arch here. We have another arch in the back and then a smaller one and a smaller one. And the furthest point is all the way back here. Um, and that by, by things getting smaller and by using these one point perspective techniques, we have created depth 
and we can see that in this. We have another way of showing this kind of perspective look. This is uh, another Renaissance painting. Um, it shows the death of Christ. It is him after he has been removed from the cross. As I said before, many, many times, um, Renaissance loved doing biblical work. And so you see a lot of religious um, work with Renaissance paintings, but not always as we saw in the previous work. Um, we know from many, many depictions that Christ is seen as a normal sized person, but if we're looking at him here, he looks very short, right? And he doesn't, this doesn't look like a normal human being. And the reason for that is because of the way the artist has used the space and to show that he is, he is kind of receding into the background and, and the effect that we get as the viewer being at the foot of the bed and at the angle we are looking at him, um, he has a very foreshortened um, body and he seems a lot shorter but if he were to stand up um, or if we were to view him from uh, say the angle of these mourners over here um, we would see that he is actually uh, a regularly proportioned person. Our next image uses uh, a couple of techniques that perspective um, and proportion, really it's a lot about proportion. We know that because this figure is so big and so detailed and so vibrantly colored, we know that this person is in front of us, right? He's not some 30 foot tall giant with these people standing right next to him. He is much closer to us. We can see the details in his face. His colors are very vibrant. Um, versus these people back here, where it's really more of a hint of facial features, colors are a little bit more muted, the, and they are much smaller. This tells us that they are much further away from him um, in this picture. Much further away here is this little bird here. Um, there isn't much detail in it at all, except for maybe just a, a fine silhouette. Um, and even further back and even smaller um, is uh, is these 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 birds back here. Um, now keep in mind these groupings too. We have him, um, we have these people over here, and then all the way at the top we have these tiny, tiny images because our next piece is going to actually not play around with proportion so much as they do play with the order on the canvas. And that is Jacob Lawrence's The Library. Um, and instead of making the, uh, the objects that are furthest away from us um, smaller, what Jacob Lawrence has done in this painting is he has overlapped them to show depth in the, in the painting. Um, this is something that we start out um, when we first start drawing, right? Um, you draw the things that are closest to you at the very, very bottom, right? We call that the foreground. They are in the foreground, they are in front. There is nothing really in front of them. The frontmost object is probably um, these books over here, right? Because they are overlapped with the objects that they are, that they are in front of. Um, I'm gonna draw your attention to this red figure here because he actually perfectly overlaps somebody in the middle ground. They are in the middle of this painting. Um, we have a couple of images here. Um, and we know that they're somewhat in the middle because they are overlapped, right? These images here are overlapped by these two images here. This person here is overlapped by this person here, but this they also overlap items. So this person, the person in the red overlaps this person in the black who overlaps this person in the purple. Um, and that tells us that this person's in the middle and this is in, a, in the background, even though they're all pretty much the same size. So by ordering objects and putting things in front of, we can create depth that way. We have this beautiful landscape and this is a use of like, kind of like white space is what the video was talking about before. Um, there's a lot of emptiness, even though it's not technically white, we're talking about like just emptiness within the, the, com the composition. Um, we have a lot of space over here. Um, this is just air and sky. You can tell it looks like a dusky morning, um, like very, very foggy. Um, maybe the sun is just coming up or just going down. Um, we have this beautiful landscape. We're on the water. I can tell that this is a mountain because I can actually zoom in and take a look. These are fishing boats. So if I were to look and zoom in here, further, um, I can see that not only is this a fishing boat, this tiny little thing right here, but there are also people on this fishing boat. So knowing what normal people look like, 
I can gauge the, um, the proportion, the size of this ship. And then I can zoom out and see how big this body of water must be and how big this mountain is. Um, there's a little bit of overlapping happening, happening here in front of this mountain and this mountain as well. Um, there is a lot of space in between these fishing boats and they kind of get smaller and they, to the point where they're just little dots um, back here, okay? So all of the space that's open, it is balanced out by this landmass here. Um, and it kind of sense, uh, it creates a sense of like emptiness um, and maybe loneliness, calmness. Um, you just, you just, you take into effect the way that they're using this space. The last image that we're gonna look at is Andrew Wyatt's Christina's World. And again, just like the landscape that we looked at before, we have a huge piece of land here. Um, and we know that by, um, by the positioning of the items, right? At the top, just like in the library, we have uh, a house, house, maybe a barn, um, all the way at the top and they're very small. So not only um, do we use the organization that Jacob Lawrence used, but we also are using perspective and proportion in order to you know, tell us that these are further back in, in, the, in, the, in the painting. Um, what we have here in the foreground is the subject of our painting. And she's in this giant meadow. We know that you know, based on what people are normally sized as and what a house would look like, we can judge that this is maybe a 10 minute walk, 15, depending on, on how fast or slow you walk. Um, this is just, well, you know, in the field. Um, she's all by herself here. Um, and so this is where we start to read into artwork and we start to wonder like, what is this picture telling us? Um, you can see that there's a difference in the field here. So maybe it's like cloud, maybe this area is, is a less of a, of attended agricultural space. Um, but I wanna draw your attention to the way that she is um, she is laying here. Um, she, we have our subject, she's in the foreground um, and she's like kind of laying down, but like this isn't the pose of somebody who's like laying down for comfort. Um, it doesn't look like she's having some kind of a picnic. It looks like she's actually all by herself. Um, and I can, I'm looking at her body and the way she's kind of twisted and contorted. Um, this doesn't look like a natural pose. It doesn't look like a comfortable pose. Um, her arm is kind of strangely skinny. Um, and so it kind of makes me wonder if maybe there's some kind of a feeling of distress here. Um, maybe, maybe something isn't all right here. Um, normally as, as our landscape before, it was very calm, maybe a little bit lonely, um, but this has a definite sense of, uh, of you're almost worried like what's going on with this girl. Um, and you know, again, it's her posture. It's the loneliness, it's the expanse, it's how far, it's the way she's looking at how far away this house is. Maybe this 10 minute walk is, is, is a little bit too far for her. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of background um, on this painting. It's called Christina's World. And there are, the, the main inspiration is Andrew Wyatt's um, neighbor. Um, he actually had his wife pose. So this is closer to what his wife looked like, um, but the, the inspiration for the subject is his, his neighbor. And we think, we're pretty sure, if you read the, the, um, the article that's behind here, the link is on Unified Classroom. Um, but we're pretty sure his neighbor had the disease polio as a child. And um, it was a pretty serious disease. Um, in most cases, um, in your best case scenario, a lot of times people ended up walking with a limp for the rest of their lives. Some people died from it. Um, and this woman in particular, Christina, his neighbor, um, <clears throat> was actually confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Knowing that, that kind of adds to the sense of foreboding and, and uncertainty and maybe concern, right? Because um, if you've ever had to push somebody in a wheelchair, you know that it is very limited as to where they can go. Stairs can cut them off. Um, and if you ever have to go in the grass, um, wheelchairs often do not work very well in them. So if we know that his neighbor is confined to a wheelchair, we know that she's in a field and she's maybe a 10 minute walk at best. Um, this is 
a very far way for somebody who, who has to actually essentially crawl back to the house, right? Because there's no wheelchair in sight. Um, we know that she cannot walk. Um, and so therefore this whole picture takes on a completely different meaning, right? It's much different from the landscape that we looked at before and probably um, a lot more, uh, a lot different from what you may have initially thought when you looked at it. And, and, and before we started delving into why she was laying like this and what was going on. So these are just a couple of ways that artists can use space um, and, and, and the different ways that you can hopefully try and explore space in your artwork.